Slickline refers to a single strand wire which is used to run tools into wellbore for several purposes. It is used in the oil and gas industry, but also describes that niche of the industry that involves using a slickline truck or doing a slickline job. Slickline looks like a long, smooth, unbraided wire, often shiny, silver chrome in appearance. It comes in varying lengths, according to the depth of wells in the area it is used up to 35,000 feet in length. It is used to lower and raise downhole tools used in oil and gas well maintenance to the appropriate depth of the drilled well. In use and appearance it is connected by the drum it is spooled off of in the back of the slick line truck to the wire line sheave around well grooved and sized to accept a specified line and position to redirect the line to another sheave that will allow the slick line to enter the well bore. Slick line is used to lower downhole tools into an oil or gas well to perform a specified maintenance job downhole. Downhole refers to the area in the pipe below surface, the pipe being either the casing cemented in the hole by the drilling rig or the tubing, a smaller diameter pipe hung inside the casing. Uses, slick line is more commonly used in production tubing. The wireline operator monitors at surface the slick line tension via a weight indicator gauging the depth via a depth counter zeroed from surface, lowers the downhole tool to the proper depth completes the job by manipulating the downhole tool mechanically, checks to make sure it worked if possible, and pulls the tool back out by winding the slick line back onto the drum it was spooled from. The slick line drum is controlled by a hydraulic pump, which in turn is controlled by the slick line operator. Slick line comes in different sizes and grades. The larger the size, and higher the grade, generally means the higher line tension can be pulled before the line snaps at the weakest spot and causes a costly fishing job. Due to downhole tools getting stuck because of malfunctions or downhole conditions including sand, scale, salt, asphaltons, and other well byproducts settling or loosening off the pipe walls because of agitation either by the downhole tools or a change in downhole inflow, sometimes it is necessary to pull hard on the tools to bring them back year full to surface. If the tools are stuck, and the operator pulls too hard, the line will snap or pull apart at the weakest spot, which is generally closer to surface as the further year fall the weak point in the line is, the more weight it has to support. Weak spots in the line can be caused by making the circle around the counter wheel, making a bend around a sheave, a kink in a line from normal use. When the slick line parts, this can create an expensive fishing job. It is called fishing because you often have to try different fishing tools until you get a bite, then you have to work the original tools downhole free, or cut off the slick line where they join the tools downhole so that you can pull the broken slick line back to surface and out of the way, in order to fish the stuck tool string. Because of the downtime involved in fishing, meaning not being able to flow the oil gas well, the client is losing money by lack of production and also the cost of the slick line unit to fish and the cost of what is left in the hole if it is not fished out. Slick line was originally called measuring line, because the line was flat like a tape measure, and marked with depth increments so the operators would know how deep in the hole they were. This probably changed because the flat measuring line wasn't as strong as the modern slick line, and separate depth counters were developed. It is advantageous to keep the diameter of the wire as small as possible for the following reasons. It reduces the load of its own weight. It can be run over smaller diameter sheaves, and wound on smaller diameter spools or reels without overstressing by bending. It keeps the reel drum size to a minimum. It provides a small cross section area for operation under pressure. The disadvantage of a smaller diameter slick line is the lower strength. Depth and the nature of the job will affect what slick line truck used. The sizes of solid wireline in most common uses are, 0.092 inches, 0 0.108, 0 0.125, 0.140, 0.150, and 0 0.160 in diameter, and are obtainable from the wire drawing mills in one piece standard lengths of 18,000, 20,000, 25,000 and 30,000 foot lengths. Other diameters and lengths are usually available on request from the suppliers, with the largest size currently available at 0.188 inches. Mechanical and hydraulic jars, slick line tools operate with a mechanical action, controlled from surface in the wireline truck's operator's compartment. Typically, 
This mechanical action is accomplished by the operation of jars. There are generally two types of jars. Mechanical and hydraulic. Mechanical jars look like a long, tubular piece of machined metal that slides longer or shorter approximately 75% to 90% of its total length. They give the effect of hammering on the downhole tools. The weight or hit of the hammer depends on how much sinker bar is added above the jars. Generally, a slick line operator controls the downhole tools with taps and hits from the sinker bar via the mechanical jars, controlled at surface by lowering or raising the tool string and monitoring weight, depth, and pressure. Mechanical jars for slick line can hit up or down the hole, making them a versatile form of jarring. Hydraulic jars for slick line are generally meant to jar up only, because not enough sinker bar is able to feasibly be lubricated into jar down on the downhole tools. Hydraulic jars work by the operator pulling up on the line, which puts an upward force on the top of the hydraulic jars. The bottom of the hydraulic jars is usually attached by threaded connection to the mechanical jars, which are attached to the downhole tools. Depending on how hard the operator pulls on the hydraulic jars will affect how fast they hit, and how hard they hit. When the top is pulled on, the inner mandrel begins to slide upwards. It has a restriction in it that hydraulic fluid has to bypass as it is pulled upwards, until it reaches an area of no restriction, allowing it to slide rapidly. The reason for the initial tighter restriction is to allow the operator to pull his line to the desired hitting range. Generally once he hits that range on his weight indicator, he waits while the jar's opening to the less restricted point, whereupon the sinker bar travels upwards rapidly, providing an upwards hit on the downhole tools. The jars can then be reset by lowering the line until the weight of the sinker bar closes, or pushes the inner mandrel of the hydraulic jars back to the starting position. Because the hydraulic jars are designed to provide a wait time to allow the operator to get up to the desired line tension, they can provide a very effective upwards hit. Mechanical jar and hydraulic jar hitting power is affected by the length of the jars, the mass of the weight above them, and the tension of the line pulling on them. Some completion components may be deployed and retrieved on slick lines such as wire line retrievable safety valves, battery power downhole gauges, perforating, placing explosively set bridge plugs, and placing or retrieving gas lift valves. Slick line can also be used for fishing, the process of trying to retrieve other equipment and wire, which has been dropped down the hole. Applications The most common applications for slick line are tagging TD, gauge ring runs, tubing broach slash plunger installations, bailing sand and debris, shifting sleeves, setting slash pulling plugs and chokes, setting slash pulling gas lift valves, running tail pipes, bottom hole pressure and temperature surveys. Spinner surveys, Kinley perforator, sandline cutter, and caliper, running production logging tools, fishing operations, paraffin cutting, chipping ice slash salt, lubricating long assemblies in and out of the hole. Braided line, braided line is generally used when the strength of slick line is insufficient for the task. Most commonly, this is for heavy fishing such as retrieving broken drill pipe. The most common use for braided line is fishing electric line tools. Slick line tools. Equals jar equals, this type of tool can be extended and closed rapidly to induce a mechanical shock to the tool string. This shock can induce certain components such as plugs to lock into place and then unlock for retrieving. Jars are commonly used to shear small brass or steel pins that are put in place to function certain downhole tools at a certain moment. The operator can use the jars to shear the pins at a predetermined depth. Spang jars are manually operated by the wireline operator who either lifts or lowers wire rapidly, requiring a great deal of expertise. Power jars use springs or built-in hydraulics to give an upward jarring motion where greater force is required. Equals stem equals, stem essentially just serves to add weight to the tool string. The weight may be necessary to overcome the pressure of the well. Some variations of stem, called roller stem, may have wheels built into the tool to allow the tool string to glide more easily down moderately deviated wells. Stem give the hammering action to the tool string which in turn allows the jars to transmit the force given by the movement of the stem's bars. Depending on well conditions extra small OD stems are use or extra large. 
the range can be from 0.75 inches to 3.50 OD and the stems normally come in 2 feet, 3 feet or 5 feet lengths. The connection to the rope socket or other tools can be a threaded connection or a QLS system. Equals pulling tools equals, these are tools designed for fishing other wireline components which have been dropped down hole. All wireline tools are designed with fishing necks on their top side, intended to be easily grabbed by pulling tools. Pulling tools are also used for retrieving seated components such as plugs. Equals gauge cutter equals, a gauge cutter is a tool with a round, open-ended bottom which is milled to an accurate size. Large openings above the bottom of the tool allow for fluid bypass while running in the hole. Most often a gauge ring will be the first tool ran on a slick line operation. A gauge ring that is just undersized will allow the operator to ensure clear tubing down to the deepest projected working depth. For example 2 and 7 eighths tubing containing 2.313 profiles would call for a gauge ring between 2.25-2.30. A gauge ring can also be used to remove light paraffin that may have built up in the tubing. Often a variety of different sized gauges and or scratches will be run to remove paraffin little by little. Gauge cutter can be used for drift runs also. Equals lead impression block equals, if an obstruction is found downhole, a lead impression block can be run to help determine its nature. The lip has a malleable lead base in which the obstruction can leave an impression when they meet. The lip is called wireline camera because of its function to mark any object downhole. They are also sometimes called confusion blocks because they only give a two-dimensional view of the downhole object, making it hard for an inexperienced person to determine what three-dimensional object is in the hole. Equals downhole baler equals, balers are downhole tools that are generally long and tubular shaped, and are used for both getting samples of downhole solids and for baling the unwanted downhole solids from the well. Balers are attached either via threaded connection or releasable downhole tool to the wireline tool string, and are manipulated from surface by the wireline operator. Balers usually have an interchangeable bottom which also houses a check to keep the solids from falling or washing out of the bottom. Equals sample baler equals, a sample baler is generally around a meter long and has a hollow tube usually around 40 mm in diameter, with a ball check on the bottom and an opening at the top. This tool is beat downwards into the as yet unknown obstruction using the mechanical jars and weight above of the wireline tool string. Generally, after a predetermined amount of hits, hopefully allowing a usable sample of solids to fill the barrel. When the tool is pulled upwards, the solids usually settle the ball check onto its seat, which will keep the solids in the barrel during the return trip to surface, where the solids can be inspected to determine what the downhole obstruction was. This procedure can be hit and miss, the success depending on how readily the solid was accepted into the barrel, and if the ball check was properly seated on the return trip to surface. If the ball check is not seated downhole fluids tend to wash the sample out of the bottom of the sample baler, leaving the inspectors at surface wondering if the tool actually collected a sample. Persistence is generally a good rule of thumb with this tool. Equals stroke baler equals, a stroke baler functions like a Chinese water pump, and is used to collect unwanted solids from the wellbore. A stroke baler is long and tubular looking, with a smaller rod that extends from the top, a hole in the bottom, and is generally around 7 meters long, but the length depends on how much barrel section is added to the baler. The barrel free floats on the stroke rod, which is attached to the wireline tool string. The tool is usually spudded into the downhole solid, then the wireline tool string is pulled upwards, which in turn pulls the stroke up through the barrel. Ideally, this draws the downhole solid in through the bottom shoe of the tool, past the check and into the barrel for collection. The tool is usually stroked either a predetermined number of times, or until it appears the tool is not stroking, which can mean either it is full, or stuck. Equals hydrostatic baler equals, a hydrostatic baler functions like a vacuum, and is used to suck up unwanted solids from the wellbore. A hydrostatic baler is generally around 2.5 meters long and is tubular looking, with two 10 mm holes on opposing sides at the top of the tool, and a hole in the bottom. A hydrostatic baler uses a pin plug with O-ring seals at the bottom, 
and a plug at the top to maintain the surface pressure that it was assembled at all the way to the bottom of the well, whereupon it is spudded into the downhole solids, which ideally pushes the shoe into the bottom plug, which shears the pin on the bottom plug. An oil or gas well's pressure downhole is always more than atmospheric pressure at surface, due to the formation pressure, and a combination of depth and hydrostatic weight of well but fluids. Sometimes fluid will be added to the well but to assist in bailing by bringing up the pressure, and also lubricating the downhole solid. Because the pressure inside the baler is much less than the downhole well bore pressure, any solids that are loose enough are sucked up by the vacuum formed when the bottom plug is sheared and travels upwards through the barrel, followed by the solids. At the same time, due to the change from negative pressure to positive pressure, the top plug pops out, and excess flow is directed out through the 10 mm ports on the sides of the top of the tool. These ports allow the barrel to fill more readily. Then the baler is returned to surface where it is taken apart, the solids are emptied, and it is cleaned and serviced with new o-ring seals. Care must be taken when disassembling its surface as the tool is potentially charged with a downhole pressure and may blow apart when being unthreaded if not bled off first. Equals running tools equals, these tools are primarily used to set plugs into locking profiles located in the tubing. However, the term running tool refers to a downhole tool attached to the wireline tool string that is used to run another tool that is meant to be left downhole when the tool string returns to surface. In general, a running tool is attached to a downhole locking tool that locates and locks into the selected downhole profile. The locking tool, or lock for short, can be attached via threaded connection to the top of a variety of different tools, including but not limited to, downhole chokes one-way check valves, instrument hangers, and most commonly, tubing plugs. The lock is fitted onto the running tool and attached using shear pins made of brass or steel. When the target profile is reached a lock can be set by seating the lock into the profile using mechanical jars until the locking keys have locked the lock into the profile, whereupon the operator usually pull tests the lock to give an indication it is properly set then shears off the shear pins with his mechanical or hydraulic jars to allow the tool string to return to surface. There are many different types of running tools, some are mechanically complex and able to be made selective in order to pass through profiles in order to reach one of the same size but a different depth. Some are relatively simple, such as an F-collar stop running tool, which is essentially a metal rod which fits inside the collar stop downhole tool which is pinned in place. References Http, while in a comb while line tube wheels slash.